Hey everybody, coming at you, it's a Denver Hero, and, to, and welcome back to another episode of Game Talk. As you can see, it's slightly unorthodox, but it does hold a special place in my heart. And it's pretty self explanatory, but without further ado, let's get into it. You see, the first Pokemon game I actually owned was this one, Pokemon Freedom Heart game. The first actual Pokemon game, actual, actual one was Pokemon Sapphire. This is before I got Sapphire. This was the very first Pokemon game I ever owned. It was the Pokemon Trading Card game, which is kind of kind of funny. I remember an um, old, at the time, friend gave it to me. Just get, gave it to me. I was like, oh, okay, cool. So I put it in my Game Boy and I'm just like, oh, all right, awesome. But it wasn't what I thought it was until I looked at the uh, cartridge. Because there's actually an old Pokemon, like, computer, trading card game for a computer game that that I had when I was a kid, and I actually kind of liked it for a while there. I was actually kind of into the Pokemon trading game. I think a lot of people were, not even a lot of people. And for what it was at the, for, for the time, it was fun. I liked it. It was okayly interactive. I, I got to do things with my opponent's turn, and it was it, it was fun. It was fine. But then that changed. But you know, that was after I discovered Yu-Gi-Oh. And well, you know how that story goes, at least for me. And, Kind of dropped Pokemon and picked up Yu-Gi-Oh! I liked it more, it was more interactive. But I digress. This being the first Pokemon game I ever played, it does follow like a similar pattern as to the other Pokemon games. There are like gyms, quote unquote, or clubs. Each one specialing in a different kind of like type of like Pokemon and Pokemon cards in this instance you have to go there and beat them, get this medal, and then go to like what is affected like the Pokemon like league and and to win. So, like most Pokemon games, it's pretty self-explanatory, the form is the same, except instead of going from like all over the region using your various Pokemon moves to move aside like rocks and surf and fly, you just walk on like an overworld kind of like hub thing and go from club to club to club to face the various, uh, what is effectively gym leaders or club leaders or something like that to get their medal. But as per usual with all these Pokemon games, there's a, isn't it that there's also a professor who will periodically send you a trading card packs through like the email after everything milestone or so. And there is a rival who, again, after every milestone or so will challenge you to see how far you've come and upon winning said rival match you get a special like, trading card pack which will give you just a boost up and power up your deck and whatnot. But true about everywhere you go like in these Fergus clubs there are various trainers you can face and some you have to face and then when you win you get a certain you know like I'm on like pack like one or two packs usually to, you know, get new cards, boost up your deck, improve strategies, make another one, which you can make, I think, like, five or so decks, you know, different ones, so that way you can go into every game with the most optimal deck imaginable for the match in which you will, you are participating in. Well, it's only a match. It's only really one game each. It's not like best of like three or something. It's just one um, game's winner take all. And I don't think really to explain the, the rules of the Pokemon trading card game because like, the first one to get all six prize cards wins. Well, if you get them at the same time, it's like a lightning round where you get like one prize card if I'm not mistaken, and then whoever gets that one wins. As a, as a kid, I remember having a lot of fun with it, despite it, the, sim the simplicity of the Pokemon Freedom Home game. I had a lot of fun with it. It was there I kind of started learning more I guess, strategies and how to play the Pokemon Freedom Home game and how, it, how it's actually played. Opposed to just effing around with my uh, brother or friends and just kind of doing, what, and kind of just doing what, 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 whatever it is we wanted. And it was there where, especially it's like the psychic. Uh, leader, I was like stonewalled for lack of a bit because of his strategy was like healing and 
making sure my, my like higher attack damaging Pokemon just couldn't hurt his Mr. Mime. And there's something like in Yu-Gi-Oh! that's just like, oh, um, do this, destroy or banish or something like that to just get rid of him off the field. And because of that, there was just no way of me just stopping it beyond, you know, doing, doing enough damage. Which sometimes I couldn't do and still had the energy removal card, which trainer card, which allows me to just remove an energy so we couldn't do something and then attack. Hoping. I think that was a Pokemon power of like an effect in Yu-Gi-Oh! If I'm not mistaken, so maybe I just couldn't do anything anyway when that was super annoying. I eventually did beat him, though. But oh boy. Just super annoying. And yeah. I did remember like save scumming a lot, especially with um, the the rival. I didn't like um, the fact that I would lose or I would accept the loss for the crap I lost to this person. If someone asked, yeah, I lost. But on the game file lines, I I like, oh hey, you're like undefeated kind of deal. Obviously, I wouldn't be, but I just didn't like it. Obviously, I don't think anyone likes it. But I remember the first time the rival came out of nowhere, I was wholly unprepared and. I think he just kind of checked me in the, in the mouth. That's when I started to like save scum because the last time I saved was before the uh, like club leader and I didn't want to have to battle him again. I'm like, you know what, screw it. I'm just gonna do this from now on so I don't have to go through this again because that's just annoying. So yes, I'm a dirty save scummer. I apologize. No, not really, I don't, I don't, I don't. I don't really care. I mean, it's just a trading card game. It's not like something actually important like darks. Anyway. <laughs> but speaking of like, it's got my own reason I kind of started doing them because like the coin flips in that game were just heavily favored the computer. It's like it wasn't programmed to be 50 50 programmed to like favor the computer to add artificial difficulty. Something I caught up pretty quick when I was a kid. I'm like, all right, fine. If you're not going to play fair, I'm not going to play fair either. I'm just going to keep doing this. So yeah, how does that feel? It's a bit too good now, does it game? That can't feel anything, period. But hey, you know, whatever, it's all good, it's all good. Which happens a lot again with the psychic person because I think we're confusion luck anyway. <sighs> and luck is the operative term, since it's a card game, very much the operative term. But yeah. Thinking of leaders, some like uh, club leaders. With most of them, you have to like fight a certain number of players, usually three within their club, in order to gain like the right to to, to challenge them because that's oh, well, proving yourself you're you're actually you know worth my time, even though I've earned like seven of the eight badges. Can you not see what I've done? Are you saying you're just better than everyone else here? Are you that arrogant or whatever? Fine, whatever. I'll just beat these losers and then hey, go about that. Check you in the mouth real quick and go home. Over to the Pokemon Trading Card League Championship thingy whatever extravaganza bonanza thing which again nowhere near as monumental as in the actual pokemon games because you're just playing a card game just like a just like a two-room deal you go into the main room and then you go to the challenge room you, like you fight i think like four people in a row it's a gauntlet and you gotta win each one before you can fight the uh the, you know the champion and uh, no points for guessing who the champion is. That's right, it's your rival. And it's your rival, much like in the original one, becomes the champion before uh, before you do. And so you have to challenge him and, and, to, and win. Which, if I'm not mistaken, on my original file, on my actual authentic cartridge, my file got corrupted. Yep. And I lost all of that data and information it was super annoying i had to go through all that again and for a while i just didn't because i didn't feel like it because i went through a bunch of crap just to get to the end just to finally face the guy i set it down for like a day or so something happened i don't even remember what if anything major i turned it on with the whole like noise and then turned it back off turned it on and my face data was gone and i'm just like well i'm not playing this for a while because I just don't feel like going through that again right now. Wasn't for years that I picked that game up again. And it's like, oh yeah, sure, why not? I'll, I'll play it and I'll see how it is again. Because I remember having fun with it. Because it's just the 
Game Boy Advance version of the Pokemon trading card game. You play people, you get packs, you win, you play more. It's a virtual a Pokemon trading card game. It's, there's nothing wrong with it, and there's nothing wrong at all. It's not my personal opinion. In a way, it kind of reminds me of the like, Duelist Academy Yu-Gi-Oh uh, game for the Game Boy Advance. And it's uh, very similar in that it's very like go to these certain points in the, in the overworld map, get these points, earn these things, advance, and go until you become the king of games. In fact, where the fuck do you go tit for tat? Although, I, although speaking of tit for tat, the, the second one of this Pokemon Trading Card game never made it over to the stage, which I always found to be sad because I would have definitely played it if I had to. If I had known, I would definitely play that. Just to be like, oh yeah, why not? Like this, we have all the like gold, silver, crystal Pokemon in there. Sure, I'll, I'll give that a get. But never made it over here. I've never played it before, which was a little sad in my opinion. But hey, what can you do? What are some of my closing thoughts? Is I I enjoyed it. I mean, yeah, it's, it's very simplistic. It's the overworld was just like an island where you just kind of went to it. Nothing major. The design was very Pokemon-esque, the, 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 GB, the GB like squares and sprites and whatnot. It's just a Pokemon Trigo game, there's not really much more I can say. Sure, I may like the Yu-Gi-Oh one a bit more, it's, it's more dynamic, but eh, Pokemon one is fine. I know this, this one was a bit of an odd one and a short one, but I just, I don't know, I just really felt like just talking about it for a bit. <laughs> All right, well, that's all for, for today. Thank you all for listening, and I'll see you all next time.